Now see Gotham, why can't we get something like this all the time? Hey everybody, this is David and today I'm going to be talking about Gotham Season 2, Episode 3, The Last Laugh. And as you can tell, this is a Jerome-centric episode. The, that means the episode is focusing on the character of Jerome. He is clearly the main uh, antagonist of the episode. And man, what did I think of this episode? Let's get into it. First of all, we have this episode taking place where the last one left off. After Sarah was killed, Gordon and Bullock are on the lookout for this Jerome character after what he's done. They're like throwing criminals off out of windows and not worrying about the consequences. Did they just die down there or break an, a neck or something? Who the heck knows? Just find us information on this Jerome character and get us there. So um, that was an interesting way. I did. I, I don't know if I felt a little bit out of character. I don't know if Gordon would really do that in other versions, but he was doing it here, and that's what matters. And he had to take control. He had to show everyone he was tough. And uh, this is something Batman would most likely do, right? So it's kind of they're giving Gordon kind of Batman's role right now in the show. I feel, except without the mask and all that, and. Um, which is cool. I like seeing Gordon step up. Like I, I like that little speech that he gave at police headquarters. That you know he's reminding everybody, hey, our chief or our commissioner uh, and and nine other people were just killed here yesterday, and some criminal was like laughing at all of this. I actually like that scene. I like seeing Gordon stand up and take control like that. I don't know if he was named commissioner yet, but he. I guess somebody has to be commissioner right now, right? I don't know, but um, yeah, I really liked everything that was going on with Gordon and uh, Bullock, especially Bullock at the end there when he went to Penguin. Uh, I didn't think Penguin was going to be in this episode, but he showed up at the very end. And I like that threat that Harvey uh, gave to the Penguin. I thought that was really cool. And I think we're going to see tensions rise between Gordon, Bullock, and the Penguin. I think that's going to be a lot of interesting stuff going on. Obviously, we also have Bruce and Alfred going to, I guess it was a casino, right? Or they were going to see a magic show. And while they were there, you know, Bruce runs into Leslie Tompkins. And if you know the comics, Leslie uh, kind of takes care of Bruce. She, she becomes his uh, psychiatrist in some ways to help Bruce through his tough times. And even in the comics, you know, Leslie... Uh, does keep Batman secret. She does know who Batman is and helps Bruce maintain that secret. But she also she's also one of the driving forces along with Alfred that keeps Bruce grounded. That, that tries to remind him who he was and who he is. And it's not Batman. You know, he's not this man who dresses up every day. That he has another life out there. So it's it's good that the show is actually introducing these characters to each other because I, I've been kind of waiting for it because last season they didn't make, meet each other so it's kind of good that they're meeting each other now. Obviously the highlight of this episode though was Jerome. Let's talk about Jerome here for a little bit. Uh, wow this kid for for starters he he was terrific. He was clearly channeling Heat the Ledger in this episode and the kid was like amazing. Um was he the best Joker ever? Okay, for TV quality, he was probably the best Joker on television. I'll put it. I'll put it that way. And uh, yeah, I mean, like he was creepy throughout this entire episode. There was that part though where they tried tricking you that you know, maybe Bruce is dead, like when he had Bruce in that little box and he put the knives. In, through the box and then they cut to uh, Gordon I think it was and I, I even tweeted on Twitter I had to it's like if anybody actually believes Bruce is dead punch yourselves in the face right now because come on um, and yeah but I will admit I mean this kid was creepy and it did make me think well what is he going to do if he's not going to kill Bruce in this scene uh, and um Throughout the episode, especially at the end there when, you know, he called Bruce to the stage and was making his final kill for the night. 
And uh, I, I thought that was all handled and done really well. I really enjoyed it. I thought this kid has, like, is insane. This kid is embodying everything that what made Heath the Ledger scary in The Dark Knight. And, um, and even Mark Hamill in some ways. And uh, it, was, it was just, and that ending there too, the very end when they showed all those people watching and being influenced by this kid. His legacy was starting to rise, you know. Other people out there could be the the next Joker, you know. And that's the part of the the comics that I think a lot of people like is nobody knows who the Joker is and who his, what his past is. And the fact that they kind of left it open that, hey, maybe this kid wasn't the Joker, but some of these other people that we see laughing right now might be the true Joker. Uh, that was a nice little tip to the hat of you know, who the Joker could be, and that his legacy is now out there. So we could see other uh, characters take on that persona of the Joker and take it to the ne next level, maybe. Who knows, maybe somebody will one day even wear the, the makeup that the Joker is supposed to wear, right? Or maybe even their skin will go bleach after falling into a chemical, you know, a vat of chemicals. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that was a really creepy shot. The last shot you see of you know the dead Jerome on the on the on the table, that was like that was a creepy way to end the episode, and you couldn't end it any other way with that big smile on his face and then his father's uh, voice narrating the very end. That was really well done. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the the Bruce and Selena moments as well. Those were always fun to watch. Something I noticed is that I I think Bruce. Uh, the actor who plays Bruce, David uh, Muniz or something, I forgot his name right now. Uh, it, it's a fellow David, that's all I know. Uh, I think he, I, I think he's grown during the summer. I think he was towering a little, a little bit over Selena. So uh, any scenes with those two are always a lot of fun. I really like that Alfred was very protective of Bruce uh, when when Jerome was you know bringing uh bruce up there i i really like that you know the alfred and bruce relationship to me has always been one of the my favorite relationships on this show since the beginning and it's great to see how strong it still is uh even in season two it's still some of my favorite moments so guys i'm going to wrap this review up and say i'm going to give this episode a nine out of ten i think this is actually the episode i wish they started with because it was so well done. I think this was the tone and the feel that I was looking for in the last two episodes. And I felt that maybe it was a little bit of a rough start in the beginning. But now seeing it, you know, this is a three-part episode in some sense. And it was all leading up to this. And uh, yeah, I, I had a really good time, you know, I wasn't really going to review three episodes in a row of Gotham But as soon as I saw this episode, I said, okay, I have to talk about this episode and see what other people think I also like the theory going around by the way. I forgot to mention this Barbara could be the Harley Quinn of this season of this series and I'd be okay with that but you know now that Jerome is dead I wonder if my theory, my original theory of Barbara becoming the Joker can now still, you know, happen because she is a little nutty. But now it makes me wonder if this guy, I forgot his name, the character that Barbara's working for right now that she was making out with at the end there, that the other girl saw them kissing. And I wonder if he will become the Joker. Hmm. That will be interesting. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Uh... Is this? I heard some people mention the Mad Hatter on Twitter. I don't know what the Mad Hatter was about, but I saw somebody tweet something like that. Uh, was the Mad Hatter referenced in some way and maybe I missed it? I don't know. Anyways, let me know what you guys think of this episode. Theorize some of your own theories. Give me. Let me know some of your theories on who you think the Joker is or should be. And um, who do you... I need to know. Do you guys think that Barbara should become the Joker of Gotham. <laughs> I know it's a weird question, and I know a lot of fanboys won't go with it, but you know what? At this point, you know, Gotham has taken a lot of liberties already with a lot of characters so far. I say might as well go for it. And uh, I'd, I'd be okay with it since Barbara's a loony bin. And uh, since she has a lesbian in relationships, 
you know, since she's pretty good with that, who knows, maybe she can get her own, her real life Harley Quinn, um, I don't know, so tell me what you think, and until next time, guys, take care.